When we talk to our end users and the topic of efficiency comes up, we ask them what does efficiency mean to them or what are they looking to gain from in terms of efficiency of a hydraulic fluid. Increasing efficiency can lead to enhancing productivity for our end users, improving the amount of time it takes to complete specific tasks, or it can be improving the number of tasks that can be completed in a specific amount of time. It can be minimising the energy cost of the end user, improving equipment responsiveness, or lowering the energy consumption, which in turn can lead to lower emissions. Optimising hydraulic equipment performance is key in terms of return on investment for our end users. In terms of total cost of ownership, we're not just talking about that initial outlay, the initial purchase. We're also talking about maintaining the equipment, the cost of running the equipment, and also maximising its resale value. As an additive company who provide a brand new hydraulic fluid, we can take care of the durability and also the running of the fluid. In terms of durability, hydraulic fluids are required to pass many industry standard tests. Fluids are required to meet set specifications, which are set by OEMs and industry bodies. And those specifications can require basic bench testing all the way through to full pump testing. In terms of reducing running costs, of course we come back to that topic of efficiency. For efficiency, there are no industry standard tests to measure hydraulic efficiency. There's kind of a change in the language that people use in terms of efficiency. Is it productivity and cycle time? Is it reducing the energy consumption per unit of time? Is it the work done per set amount of fuel? Or is it something as simple as a temperature reduction? Either way, what we're finding is that value and definition of efficiency can vary between end user. We're now going to look at the development of a new energy efficient hydraulic fluid. And that's going to begin with some fluid fundamental bench testing. We're then going to take that fluid from the bench testing and we're going to talk about total system efficiency. We're then going to move to a controlled vehicle test and then finally, field testing. We're a scientific company, so for us, the fluid fundamental bench testing is a key part of the development of a new hydraulic fluid. But we're also totally aware that in terms of our end users, their interest is going to come in terms of that field testing and the real world results that they get at the end. Now, I'm just going to cover a couple of basics in terms of a hydraulic fluid. First of all is the base oil. You can see that it takes up the majority of your hydraulic fluid. So the additive plays a key part in terms of the durability of your hydraulic fluid and the protection that it offers. That can be anti-corrosion, can be antioxidancy, anti-foam. There's a ton of the chemistry and the actual performance of your hydraulic fluid can be found in that additive package. And it's our job to develop that section of your hydraulic fluid. The viscosity modifier, which are in there to increase the temperature range that your fluid operates at, improving the performance of your fluid at lower temperatures and at higher temperatures. But we believe viscosity modifiers can offer more than that. And the, the work that we've done is looking to improve the performance of a brand new viscosity modifier to give us more than just that temperature performance. But can we get an efficiency benefit as well? Going on to develop our brand new energy efficient hydraulic fluid, we were looking to deliver energy efficient benefits, but we also want to maintain or increase the durability that a hydraulic fluid offers. And we need to remain cost effective to our end users. So now I'd like to show you the fluids that we're going to be testing today. First of all, a monograde fluid. This is going to be our baseline fluid. Being a monograde, it clearly doesn't contain one of those viscosity modifiers. We're then going to compare that to two multigrade fluids. EE viscosity modifier 1, our brand new energy efficient hydraulic fluid containing our brand new energy efficient viscosity modifier. We're going to compare that to an industry leading viscosity modifier containing hydraulic fluid. Fluid traction is the internal friction of a squeezed lubricant film. And the diagram at the top gives you an indication of a hydraulic fluid where the viscosity modifier has a large amount of branching and cross-linking, which leads to an increase in the traction in terms of that hydraulic fluid. At the bottom, we have a comparison where we have a viscosity modifier that's been designed to not include that branching and that cross-linking. And inherently, if on the chemical nature of that hydraulic fluid will mean that it has a lower value in terms of traction. We know as well that lubricant fluid traction can contribute to its efficiency. And that's not just studies that we've done, that's academic research which has been published. That we can back this up with our own driveline efficiency studies that we've completed. We know that different viscosity modifiers can affect the traction of your fluid. Of course, that's the polymeric content of the fluid is going to have an effect on its traction. The lower the traction, this can be a contributor to your efficiency of your hydraulic fluid. We use a device known as a mini traction machine. And what we've done is we've tested the free fluids that I've described. The higher the traction coefficient, the higher the traction of the fluid. So that's a non-desirable result. And you'll see that for the monograde polymer, that has the highest traction coefficient across the testing phase. Next, we have our industry leading viscosity modifier containing fluid, slightly below uh, the baseline. But pleasingly for us, below that is our own energy efficient hydraulic fluid, which has the lowest traction coefficient across the testing sweep. 
The results of the mini traction machine are an indication of what you may get in terms of efficiency, but they won't give you an absolute value in terms of the efficiency that you'll get when using one of these hydraulic fluids in the real world. If we imagine a piece of hydraulic piping, our fluid travels along the direction of the piping, that direction and that movement, and that flow, is referred to as the primary flow, and if that's what we want our energy to be transferred. However, if we take a straight piece of piping and we introduce a change in geometry, what then happens is that there can be the formation of secondary flows. Now these are a change in direction of the fluid, which is perpendicular and with the primary flow. So what exactly is the problem with secondary flows? As your fluid is traveling along its primary flow, the fluid in the center of the pipe will be moving faster than the fluid which is on the outside, closer to the walls. As you introduce a change in geometry, the faster moving fluid at the center of the pipe will then be pushed towards the outside of the pipe due to centrifugal forces. This causes the faster moving fluid to mix with the slow moving fluid which is on the outside, and in turn, this leads to a pressure differential formation. To counter this, the fluid from the center of the pipe then circulates to the outside of the pipe and vice versa. This leads to your secondary flow. Effectively, any flow that's not contributing to your primary flow leads to a loss of momentum. A loss of momentum is a loss of energy transferred to the task at hand. On its own, in one instance, one change in geometry, secondary flow would be considered a minor loss of energy. However, across a full hydraulic system, there are numerous changes in geometry. Secondary flow now becomes a major factor in terms of efficiency loss. We use a technique referred to as particle image velocimetry. We've taken a piece of mobile hydraulic equipment. We have a 90 degree bend there, and we have a 180 degree bend there. And we've replicated the dimensions of those changes in geometry into perspex blocks. We then set those perspex blocks up in a hydraulic system and we pass our fluid through those test pieces. We've also included tracer particles. So the tracer fluids are now circulating through our test piece. We then take an optical laser and we line it up perpendicular to our test piece. And this optical laser fires a single sheet of light at the test piece, effectively illuminating one cross section of the test piece. Perpendicular to that optical laser, we have a high-speed, high-capture camera, and that effectively records what's been illuminated at that single cross-section. So the light pieces there are those trace particles, and you'll clearly see there is both clockwise and anti-clockwise movement. But the key takeaway from this is that the primary flow of our test piece, in this instance, is moving into the plane of the board. So we want our trace particles to be moving in that direction. What that tells us is that all the movement there, everything that's highlighted in this instance, is secondary flow. And this is all circulation that's not contributing to the primary flow of your hydraulic system. We take those images and we can produce a heat map of the secondary flow found at that cross section. The red sections uh, highlight clockwise secondary flow, blue sections anti-clockwise secondary flow. We then compare the secondary flows recorded for our energy efficient hydraulic fluid versus the industry standard uh, hydraulic fluid. And what we see is that in terms of the magnitude of those seven sections, in every instance, using our own energy efficient hydraulic fluid, the magnitude of secondary flow is lower or reduced compared to the industry standard. And I'll tell you that it's a similar story for area as well, where effectively the area of secondary flow, the amount of secondary flow we're observing is lower than that of the industry leading viscosity modifier. We have a baseline just in terms of the comparison between our energy efficient viscosity modifier and the monograde, we'll see that the magnitude and the area are again considerably lower. These aren't absolute values. Whilst we're seeing 20% reduction in area here, that's not necessarily going to translate to a 20% reduction in terms of energy efficiency when we get to the real world testing. It's an explanation of the science behind it and an indication of the performance that you're going to get. We're now going to move on to total system efficiency. At one of our sites, we have our very own hydraulic efficiency rig, which mimics a piece of mobile hydraulic equipment. It has a pump, it has a motor, numerous pieces of hydraulic pipe work, and numerous changes in geometry as well. What this rig allows us to do is also apply numerous pieces of instrumentation to each of those changes in geometry. So that then allows us to measure changes in efficiency, changes in pressure across that hydraulic system. We've produced a map of testing conditions that aim to cover the majority of real world operating conditions. We plug this into our rig and we have it operate under all six of these conditions and we get an output like this. In terms of the baseline in orange and in terms of the industry leading viscosity modifier, we'll see there isn't really a great difference in terms of system efficiency as we move across the temperature sweep tested. But once again pleasing for us, we see that significant benefit when using our own energy efficient hydraulic fluid compared to the industry standard technology. The hydraulic rig has numerous changes in geometry and we've applied instrumentation across those changes in geometry. And one of the things that allows us to measure 
is the pressure loss across changes in geometry. So we measured the pressure loss across a 90 degree bend. We set it up to record an increasing flow rate. And what we found is, once again, the baseline uh, monograde fluid and that industry standard viscosity modifier fluid both have a very similar pressure loss profile across an increasing flow rate. But significant for us, and most pleasing for us, is that our own energy efficient hydraulic fluid showed significantly less pressure loss. If you have less pressure loss across your hydraulic system during operation, that's going to give you improved efficiency across operation as well. It's now time to move on to real world pieces of equipment. We've had access to an excavator at one of our sites. We've taken this piece of equipment and we've tested two of the fluids. We've effectively set up four duty cycles that we'd like to test. We see that comparing our energy efficient viscosity modifier one versus the industry standard viscosity modifier, there was a clear benefit across all four of the tested duty cycles when using our own energy efficient fluid. And in this instance, that's based on the brake specific fuel consumption. So across all of the tested duty cycles, less fuel was required when using our hydraulic fluid. For the majority of this presentation, I've been talking about efficiency, productivity, and operation of the equipment. When choosing a hydraulic fluid, our end users also have other concerns. Those include profitability, looking to reduce their energy losses, but also sustainability as well. So trying to reduce the CO2 output using less electricity, for example. We're now going to move into real equipment in real world conditions. First field trial, we partnered with a local excavating company. We've tested three fluids. Firstly, the factory fill monograde ISO 46 fluid that comes with the piece of equipment. The second stage was to then compare that to our own energy efficient hydraulic fluid. And then the final stage, we then compare that to a shop-bought service fill oil. So at the first service fill, this is the oil that the end user would have chosen to put in their piece of equipment. So if we look at the first stage of the field trial, which took place using a summer fuel, there was an energy benefit of 1.35% using our own energy efficient hydraulic fluid compared to the baseline fluid that came with the equipment. 1.35% by simply just switching your hydraulic fluid. We then had a look at comparing our hydraulic fluid to the service fill oil, which they would have purchased at the first service. And you can now see that the energy benefit went up to 2.71%. Energy efficient viscosity modifier fluid one showed a reduced fuel consumption over the baseline. So our second field trial, we partnered with a local plastic injection molding company. The piece of equipment used was designed to produce plastic crates. This was a free stage trial where we were again looking at the efficiency of our fluid compared to a baseline reference, testing an ISO 46 monograde fluid. So this is the fluid that they were already using. And then we had a period where they tested our own energy efficient hydraulic fluid. And then we returned to their reference fluid for the end of the testing. So you'll see that by moving to our own energy efficient hydraulic fluid, there was an 8.5% decrease in terms of energy consumption by simply switching their hydraulic fluid. So in both instances, our candidate oil, comparing to the reference at the beginning of the test and at the end of the test, equated to an 8.5% energy saving, a significant number. Not everyone knows what 8.5% actually relates to in terms of cost of operation. So let's have a look at some numbers. Average motor power for or the energy consumption of that motor for an hour of usage using the monograde fluid was 82 kilowatts. We then switch that to our energy efficient hydraulic fluid, and that reduces to 75 kilowatts. Now these machines are required to run 24 hours a day. So that one hour then equates to 1,968 kilowatt hours across a 24 hour period. That's a saving of 168 kilowatt hours per day, using an example of 250 pounds for the monograde fluid. Switching to our energy efficient hydraulic fluid would lead to a saving of 21 pounds 35 for one day across a whole year, 7,789 pounds over 12 months. It's a significant saving just by changing your hydraulic fluid. We were able to demonstrate that our own energy efficient hydraulic fluid was statistically superior to the monograde baseline fluid that they were using in their equipment. But we were also able to demonstrate the benefits over the industry standard uh, viscosity modifier containing fluid as well. We also noted in the second field trial that there was a significant reduction in terms of operating temperature on the equipment and we were staggered to see an 8.5% decrease in energy consumption per unit made for that piece. And that translates to a saving of greater than £7,500 over the calendar year. So that's everything from me. Thank you all for listening today.